Hello, and welcome to Conservation Skills in 10 Minutes or Less. This series of short, skill-based videos is brought to you by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's National Conservation Training Center in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. If you have a few minutes, pull up a chair and pick up a new conservation skill or refresh an old one on topics ranging from fish culture to bird identification to stream restoration. Enjoy. Hello, my name is Matthew Patterson and I'm a course leader at the National Conservation Training Center and I'm going to lead you through this skill exercise today. So what's the topic for today? Today we're talking about measuring stream canopy closure using a spherical densiometer. So you're probably asking yourself, what is canopy closure? Well, canopy closure is the proportion of the sky hemisphere above that is obscured by vegetation when you're viewing from a, a single point. So imagine you're walking down the stream and you look up at this wide expanse of vegetation above. It's how much of that is obscured by vegetation when you're standing in, a, in one spot. Now, in a previous video, we talked about canopy cover. And in this case, we're talking about canopy closure. And I just want to take a minute to talk about the difference between the two. In the video on canopy cover, we used a tube densitometer. And we were looking straight up from a single point. And at that point, we decided, is that point obscured by vegetation? For closure, we need to take a much wider angle view of the sky above. And to do that, we need a different tool. We need a spherical densiometer. This is a box with a mirror that is either concave or convex that allows you to see a reflection of a wide angle view of the vegetation above. Now, usually in this part of the video, we talk about why do we care? Why is canopy cover and canopy closure and riparian habitat important? So for this, I suggest you go back and look at the video on the tube densitometer. We talk in, in detail about the importance of riparian habitat and why canopy cover and canopy closure are good measurements of riparian habitat. Right now, we're going to move on. Now, the first thing I want to mention is there are multiple protocols out there for using a spherical densiometer. I would pick the protocol that meets your needs and your objectives for your particular experiment. Today, we're just going to go over one protocol. Now, this is a multi-step process. Step one is you want to set up some random transects on your stream reach that you're measuring. The first one is with a random start, and then you want to space them two mean wetted stream widths apart. So whatever your wetted width is, multiply it by two and space your transects accordingly. Step two, once you have a transect set up, is to find the center point of that transect. And then you're going to set your spherical densiometer at that center point. Now you can see that we have ours set up on a tripod. And there's multiple reasons for that. The first is that the spherical densiometer to work properly needs to be level. And there's a bubble level on there to get it level. A tripod is going to make that a lot easier for you. The second reason that we do it is that we're going to take measurements in four different directions. Directly upstream, directly downstream, directly to the left descending bank, and directly to the right descending bank. As you're making those 90 degree turns, it's important that the densiometer stay in the same spot the whole time. So a tripod is helpful. The last reason that we use a tripod is you want to stay a consistent distance above the water level when you're taking these measurements. Most protocols recommend one foot above the water surface. Now, if you're interested in overhanging vegetation, maybe for fish habitat, or you're in a stream that's pretty wide, where taking all the measurements in the center might result in all zeros, you can also add two measurements along the left descending bank and on the right descending bank. In this case, you're going to face directly towards the bank. And in this case, you want it to be a foot above the water surface and one foot from the bank. Now, before we move on to step number four, I just want to give a brief introduction on how the spherical densiometer works. You can see here on the screen an image of what it's going to look like in the spherical densiometer. This is taken with a camera, 
but it gives you a good idea. But then inside that, you're going to have a grid, and this grid is where you're going to take your measurements. Now you can imagine, since you're taking measurements in four different directions at 90 degree angles, that you may have some overlap in your counts. So we want to avoid double counting as we're rotating around that fixed point. So to help prevent that double counting, we're going to use the Strickler modification, which puts a V on our grid and eliminates some of the samples so that we don't have that double counting. And this is what your spherical densiometer will look like. We just use laboratory tape, but you can see that V shape is blocking out some of that double counting. So instead of a spherical densiometer that looks like this, it's going to look like this. So let's move on to step four. How do I take the readings in the spherical densiometer? So the first step in this process is to make sure that your head is positioned correctly. Now much like putting the spherical densiometer on a tripod so that it's level and the correct height, it's important to position your head in the same way for repeatability. So what you want to do is hold the densiometer out about 12 inches and bring it towards you just until your head starts to show up in the mirror. And you can see in this image, my head is starting to show up at the top of that mirror. When you get it up right up against the grid, you're good to go. So if you look at the line intersections, there are now 17 line intersections. If any of those intersections are covered by vegetation, that is considered to be a hit. Now this particular intersection that you can see is open sky in the background. There is no cover of vegetation, so that is not a hit. This one is a little more interesting. You can see that there's glare from the sun. You want to be sure when you're taking these measurements that you're avoiding that glare. So you may have to sort of position your hand over the reflection to get rid of that glare. But we did that here and noticed that there was no vegetation here. The 15 other intersections all are covered by vegetation. So the last step then is to calculate percent canopy closure. And that formula is just the number of hits divided by the total observations. In our case, that's 17 intersections. And then you multiply by 100 to get the percent. In our case, we had 15 hits. Remember, we only had two that were no hits. Divided by 17 times the 100. And you get a percent canopy closure of 88%. The next thing to do is to repeat that same measurement in all four directions. You also may consider taking those bank measurements, depending on your situation. And then you might want to have a colleague repeat your measurements. And remember, repeatability here is good if you use that tripod. And then calculate an average canopy closure for that transect location. And as we mentioned with the tube densitometer, increasing the number of samples increases both the accuracy and precision of the instrument. So you'll probably want to do this on multiple transects in your stream reach. You want to learn more about this skill or other skills related to stream habitat? I would recommend signing up for the Stream Habitat Measurement Techniques course at the National Conservation Training Center. And if you hang on after this video, I'll walk you through how to find this course on our website. So thank you for joining us. If you have any questions about this skill or any other skill related to stream habitat or have questions about any course at the National Conservation Training Center, you can reach me at the phone and email address below. Thank you. Your best bet for finding our courses is to use a search engine, put in National Conservation Training Center, usually the first link that pops up. And then you want to, in the search bar, type in stream habitat measurement techniques. Click search. Find the PDF, click the link, and you can see it has a description, objectives, target audience, and if you scroll to the bottom, a schedule of upcoming courses. Thanks. Thanks again for joining us for Conservation Skills in 10 Minutes or Less. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, hit the subscribe button, 
share this video with a friend, or check out one of the many other skill-based videos in this series. Have a wonderful day, and always remember, the beautiful thing about learning is that no one can take it away from you.